Jeffrey came here because he's been accused of uh, poisoning his father and his uncle who uh, passed away. And we asked him, did you give that uncle any substance to deliberately harm him? You answered no. Did you give your father any substance to deliberately harm him? You answered no. The results came back the same to each question, and it came back that Jeffrey did not tell the truth. No way! I did not do this. Are you serious? I didn't do this. I didn't I do this. I knew it. I knew it. I did not do this. You failed for poisoning your father. I and didn't your do uncle. it. Uh. I have to say, if he's poisoning his own father and uncle, is it a stretch to think that he poisoned you? Yeah. All right, Jeffrey, now we asked you about Sheila, your wife. Have you ever given Sheila any substance to deliberately harm her? No. You answered no. And the result for that is you did not tell the truth. No, I didn't, Sheila. Sheila. Sheila, this is wrong. I knew you no, did. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Oh, it's all lies, right? No, he told me you when I was sitting the there taking the, listen, when I was taking Back the lie detect test, test Back the hell he says up. I was squinching my buns together, my butt together. No. No. And I, I was breathing deep breaths. You know I have to breathe you're deep. you're a liar. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. And I knew you did that to me. No, I didn't. I just kept going back to try to catch you, to try to see what you were using, so I could have you. I jail. never did this, and I'm gonna take another one in, in our state. 20 minutes before my daddy got killed, why was you riding past his house? I rolled past the house, see if I see my wife's car. What you park for? I didn't park. You parked. I, I got you park. on camera. You I didn't park. park. You kept going. No, no, no. You kept going and went back to the house. No, you did not. Yes, uh, I did. No, you did not. I did. No, well, you well, did if not. You didn't, if you didn't have anything to do with it, it's a pretty bad coincidence that a day that you say you're going to kill somebody, that guy ends up dead. That's a coincidence, Steve. I, th I think at the very least I would have questioned you. Yeah. I beg the police, Steve. Uh, but you're here because you love her, right? Like a daughter. I love her. I haven't, I haven't seen my granddaughter since this happened. You ain't gonna see him. If you fail this test, you ain't gonna never see none uh, of them. And if he were to pass this test? If he were to pass this test, I will pass the hell out, Steve. Out of disbelief. Okay. Disbelief. But, but if he were to pass, you'd If he were to pass, I would apologize to him. And I will beg for his forgiveness because I done made him look real bad. I done told the whole family. All of our friends, everybody we know that he's a murderer. And if he uh, fails the test? If he fails, he could take a last look at this face because it'll be the last time he ever sees it. All right, Carlton, uh, you're here today to prove your innocence, right? I'm innocent. You're innocent. And we asked you, before Quentin was shot, did you know he would be shot? And you answered no. Did you participate in any way in the shooting of Quinton? You answered no. Do you know who actually shot Quinton? And you answered no. And the results for your lie detector test, the results came back the same for each question, and they came back that you, Carlton, did not tell the truth. <laughs> I told you the truth. I know it. My whole family looking at me like I'm crazy. I wouldn't Nobody came believe here me, not blind. even the police. Oh, man. You going to jail. You I going ain't, to I jail. I ain't did nothing. You going to jail. You I going to jail. Nothing. Usually my guests have the most powerful reactions after the results. But in this next story, the person with the biggest reaction was me. Take a look. The coroner who does this for a living, who probably investigates hundreds of deaths a week, um, said that your daughter was injured 
four to five days before the night you put her together where you noticed nothing wrong with her. She showed no signs of anything being wrong with her, Steve. Nothing. She was playing just fine. And you noticed... She was eating. You she noticed was nothing, doing fine. You noticed nothing wrong with her. No, there was nothing wrong with her. Now, other people who lived in your house said you refused to take your daughter to the hospital. Those are lies, Steve. Nobody in that house, nobody told me to take her to the hospital because there was nothing wrong with her. She showed nothing to be wrong. So those people lied? Yes, they lied. What do you think happened? I had no clue what happened with my daughter. You have daughter. no clue. You lost your two-year-old daughter, and you have no clue why she's dead. Are you, are you, are you kidding me? Steve, she showed no signs. There was nothing. I, I, I did not I, do I, this I, to I'm my daughter. I'm asking you a simple question. You lost your two-year-old. She, she's dead, and you have no clue how she died. I, at the time, no, I did not. Because you spent prison time for this, right? Yes, I did. For something and, I didn't even and, do. And you have no idea how it happened. Here's the crazy thing with your story. Here's a little two-year-old girl, right? I mean, think about that, two years old. Her injuries were so severe, the coroner, the coroner, who was a professional, compared it to being hit by a car at 35 miles an hour, okay? Can you imagine any of you walking out of the studio, walking across the street right here, which is two busy streets, and getting run over by a 35 mile there an hour? There was no I'm signs. not talking to you, I'm talking to the audience. Um, can you imagine how bad you'd be injured, right? Yes. You, you wouldn't have, like, you would just get up and just walk away. Oh, uh, hey, that's all right, I, you know, don't, I, you, you, to, you, the light was yellow. <laughs> now, this is where it gets interesting. When detectives were interviewing Monique, they observed her taking a phone call from a friend, making plans to go out after the interview. No. They stated, although she appeared to be crying, there was no visible tears. Steve, it's I was like, in shock. You just found out your child is dead, and you're in with the detectives. You're like, hey, yeah, man, as soon as I get out of here, uh, let's go over to you know, uh, Hooters. You're doing the same thing everybody else is doing. You're just pointing, for, you're just saying it happened. You don't know. You don't want to, you're not even listening. I'm not listening? I'm not listening. I'm doing the same thing. Oh, no, no, no. Is it getting a little too tough for you to stand here and take the heat? Because you're just judging. You're not even listening. I did not you, kill my you daughter. St you start giving me some good answers, and then I'll start, like, treating you like I believe you, okay? <laughs> Monique, you came here, and you took a lie detector test. And I'll stand on my reputation that this show is a real show. We don't around. We give you the truth. We asked you, Monique, do you know for sure who caused any of those injuries to your daughter? You answered no. Did you cause any of those injuries to your daughter? No. You answered no. Did you deliberately not take your daughter for medical attention because you knew that she was beaten or abused? No. You answered no. And the results for your lie detector test is that you did not tell the truth. That is lie. That is not that true. That is wrong. That is wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. I did not do uh, anything to my daughter. You know what? You know what? Here Deal. You have to live every moment. I did not for, do nothing to my you daughter. You have to live for the rest of your life, every moment on this life, knowing what you did. I didn't do nothing she to her. her daughter. You don't know. I did not um, do nothing to my daughter. You, you, you got lucky. You got lucky. 16 months in jail. I did nothing you should, to my daughter. You should, I didn't do nothing to my You should have got kids. 60 years in jail. I did she nothing to my daughter. If they would get there and see. Delusional. You're going to be so damn rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not kill my daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did not kill yeah, yeah. my daughter. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
came for an answer for that little girl right there. The court system, the court system knew I the answer already. And you came here today I and you got the answer. My That's the truth. Now get the hell off my stage. I know you didn't. Mm. I know you didn't. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Okay? No. <laughs> okay, baby. Okay. It's not true. <laughs> you believe a lie detector <laughs> Test. All right. They, they see. You need the lie detector test. They see. And I'll say, you know what? Crying all you, you could cry all. Thing. Crying doesn't bring anybody back. So live with that. You live with that. After only five months of marriage, Max's wife Tara disappeared without a trace. Her family filed a missing persons report and organized the search to look for her. And after 28 days. That search came to a tragic end after a fisherman found Tara's body lifeless in a creek. Her family says the police are still investigating her death and have named Mac a person of interest. Take a look. My daughter disappeared January 31st on my birthday. My sister was at my house, left that morning, and said she'd be back. When we didn't hear from Tara, we knew that there was something wrong. The family members started trying to call her on her cell phone. Uh, and nobody could reach her. Then about 11 o'clock that night, we got a phone call from He dropped her off at the truck stop on the AA highway. We searched for Tara every day. We knew we weren't looking for Tara. We were looking for her body. We knew without a doubt that Tara was either, either being held against her will or she was dead. And if she was dead, we were looking for the body. Tara's husband, Mac, is one of the suspects in it. Personally, I don't believe Mac has got anything to do with it, but my daughters, my wife, they all say, yeah, he's still a suspect. Tara and Mac met, fell in love very, very fast. They had a rocky start. Mac, from the very beginning, kind of gave everyone that kind of like that, like, uh-oh feeling. Mac made this list for Tara right after they were married about things that he did not like about her. Things like she spent too much time with her family. And when he tried to isolate Tara, it pushed Tara away. When Tara left Mac, Tara had mentioned several times that she thought she saw Mac sitting in his car down the street from my house or a friend's house. He would show up in random places um, after she would be there, you know, at our local grocery store or um, even, you know, another county away. Tara definitely felt like Mac was following her at, at different points, um, or, you know, almost at a stalking um, point. Well, after uh, 28 days of searching, we, we found her body on the 28th day of February. When we were searching for Tara, it was, it was pretty devastating for everyone, everyone involved. When Mac came to us, he, he seemed sincere. I mean, he, he definitely showed uh, some, some emotion, but it wasn't to the point of losing your significant other. At the end of the road where, you know, where her body was found, you know, it's, it's actually on Mac's road at the opposite end of where Mac lives. Mac has definitely been sketchy and stalling from the beginning. I mean, I even contacted the show back in September trying to get a polygraph test done then and had it all set up, ready to go, and Mac skipped state. He moved to Florida on the day before we were supposed to be leaving to come on the show. Um, how did you find out that your sister was missing? My sister, Tara, was at my house that morning at 10.50. Um, she left, you know, hey, I'll see you later. I'll catch, I'll catch up with you when you come back into town. And um, two hours later, I tried calling her, texting her, hey, where you at? You on your way? Nothing. Um, so I get a hold of some other family members, and I'm like, okay, so what's going on? Have we heard, you know, do we know anything? You know, have you seen her? Have you heard from her? Nothing. According to the state police, they have informed us that the cause of death is undetermined. And after reviewing the autopsy, it 
that's exactly what it says. It says undetermined and apparent um, with drowning. And I actually went to the coroner and asked the coroner, what does that mean? You know, what, what does apparent drowning mean? I mean, I understand she's found in water, but she didn't go swimming in January. Um, Mac made uh, a statement on tape, and we're going to roll that now. I was not involved in her disappearance. I hadn't seen Tara for about 25 days before she disappeared. We were having some problems. We loved one another and we were trying to uh, work things out. We had big plans and then all of a sudden she, she was killed. I think she wanted a break. I think she wanted a break. Uh, we got married uh, really quick. I guess it was Sunday. I text her and she didn't call me back. I mean, she, she was very into the family, her family. So when she didn't show up for uh, the birthday party, I guess, uh, the next day Dan and Daniel came over to my house, asked me if I'd have seen her and I said, you know, I hadn't. I was hoping and, and I thought that she probably, uh, it was somewhere and was gonna come back. It took about two or three or four days for me to really start worrying about what happened to her. So we started organizing a search party and then the whole community helped. There had to be at least uh, 150 people and uh, we started in a three mile circle around a, a cell phone tower. Searched and searched and searched for about a month. We were closing in on her. I mean, we, were, we could have found her that day, I suppose. That some kids found her. I thought that uh, I was going to have to search forever for her. And then, and then, you know, she was found. I think her family knows I'm innocent. I mean, I, I, I helped them search. I've, I've seen them every day for six months. I mean, I'm, I, I don't think the police think I'm a suspect. Uh, there was a person, the last person that saw her, I would like for him to take a lie detector test too. I took this polygraph test to eliminate myself as a suspect. I hope that the lie detector test will solve all this. Do you believe Mac had anything to do with the disappearance and the, the murder of your daughter? I don't believe he had anything to do with her murder. You know, I believe he pushed her away from from himself. Your uh, your son Daniel's here. Let's bring him out. Again, um, I know this is very emotional. I see it in all your faces. What do you believe happened to your sister? Um, do I think Mac done it? No. Do I think Mac's capable of doing it? Yes. Your <coughs> wife couldn't be here today, but she did leave a voice phone. We're going to play that now. I'm calling to let you know I'd really like to be out there for the show and be with my family, but I can't be there. I just want you to know, as far as Mac goes, I don't know if he had anything to do with my daughter's murder or not, but I'd really like to find out. A lie detector test would kind of ease my mind. Mac agreed to come here, and he did take a lie detector test. And we asked him, regarding Tara's death, <clears throat> Did you cause it? He answered, no. The results for his lie detector test is that Mac did not tell the truth. Hmm. I'm Good thing you made him leave the building. And, and, that's, and that's why we did that. And that's why we don't have him on stage, because this is too serious. But I do want, Daniel, I do want you to know, Daniel. We, we notified the police of the results of the test already. We notified the police from your area. We told them that we'll cooperate. It, it just couldn't be like maybe he's feeling guilty no, for that, it? No, that doesn't mean that. Regarding Tara's death, did you cause it? Did you cause her death? And he failed for that question. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm just the too many, too many stories that that 
Hold, I'm shocked. Now, it's not to say that that wasn't who she was hooking up with, <sighs> but I'm shocked. Dan, who administers our lie detector to us, he, uh, some, uh, one of the notes concerning Max test, he wrote, in my professional opinion, the subject was deceptive and leaked signs of deception as well as failing the polygraph question of causing Tara's death. <laughs> Don't do anything stupid, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> Let the police do their work. <laughs> and hopefully it's been put a year and a half. Well, maybe this does help, okay? He wouldn't take one for the police. Why would he agree to take one if he, if he... Well, because like your brother and like you said, he's a weirdo. Maybe he thinks, you know, maybe he could he beat, he it. beat it. Right. Maybe he thought if enough time went by and he took one, <laughs> that he could beat it. I don't know what is in the mind of a killer. But because of this test, I do believe that Mac caused the death of your sister. When my mom passed, I was seven. I would have turned eight the following July. My mom was like, she was a people's person, you know, and we used to sit and like laugh and talk. To me, my mom was the world. She treated me like I was her world, and I really don't have any bad memories of her. I was pretty much spoiled by my mom. Like anything I wanted, it was always gotten for me. The day that I found out my mom had passed away, uh, I was at school. So when I got home, my grandma sat me on the couch and she was like, they found your mama today. And you know, I remember saying, where she at? And then she was like, she gone. She told me they found her in a creek, like by a creek or whatever, and somebody had killed her. And then, like after that, she just kind of, I just started crying. You know, she, just help me or whatever. There was an announcement at school saying that they wanted the school to pray for the family because we had just lost our mom. So that was pretty much how I found out about my mom being killed. To be six years old in class, it, it was crazy. It was a crazy way to find out that she was killed. I remember her funeral. It was, be, you know, it was packed or whatever. It was a lot of people there. Um, it was sad, you know, a lot of crying because of the injuries. And uh, I think, I'm guessing from her jaws being broken and them having to put it, fix it back together, you know, it kind of, I guess, swelled it a little bit, but it was like two times the size, so she didn't, she just didn't look like my mom anymore. Going to my mom's funeral, I never really understood what was going on. And as I got older, I understood what was going on, but it still hasn't registered. Like, to this day, I still haven't cried about her dying. I kind of don't like to dwell too much on how she died. You know, she, she's gone. I don't really remember Donna, but um, he was my mom's boyfriend. We was able to read the case file, and he placed himself at the scene. He admitted to open-handedly slapping her and run, running for his life, which, I mean, be for real. I don't know too much about the guy. I know what I've read about him, and I actually want to meet him just to look him in his eyes and, and see what was his emotions like when he was doing it. Like, how do you feel after you did it? Do you understand what I've been through in my life since you did it? I'm kind of nervous. I actually don't know how I would react seeing him. I don't know if I'm gonna get scared or if anger is gonna take over. I really don't know. I thought about this a long time on what I wanted to say to him. And being here today, I, I think I kind of just want to forgive him. I feel like that'll help me get past the point that I've been stuck in my whole life. It was a story they said something about, uh, my mama witnessed the murder and they were supposed to put her in protective custody and they didn't. I think dumb killed my mom. Like, I, I feel like he did more than open-handedly slapped her. I feel he strangled her, you know, and he broke her jaws and that he left my mom in that creek to die. For someone to go in the courtroom and tell a judge that they did something, knowing that that person has their life in their hands, um, that's not something you just lie about. 
So me personally, I feel like Donald's gonna fail the test. My relationship with, with Captain, I know the family. I know him a long time. We were friends and we started dating. She did, like I said, she did her thing, I did my thing. She was a good woman. She was my friend. Last time I saw Captain, that's a week before they, she got killed. Well, when I got the call and I found out that she was dead, I was shocked. You know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't believe it. I had said they were lying. Well, yeah, it was a rumor going around that I was the one that killed her. So when they brought me to the police station, I see the, two, the lieutenant, the, the investigator, and the lieutenant get in there. I'm drunk. They know I'm drunk. I'm high as hell. I had told them that I had slapped her. I was not with her when all this went down. They arrested me on first degree murder. When I went to trial, I went in front of a judge because I really know the law then. And uh, I had a state upon a lawyer. The state witness said she was with me between 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. She not was with me during that time. And, uh, the other two witnesses said that she was with them. So after all this said and done, when the judge left out, came back with the decision, he said he could not find me guilty of murder. He said he felt and find me get the manslaughter. He didn't know if she was drowned, they forced to drown, or she drowned in an unconscious stage. And my lawyer jumped on the owner, how can you feel? I mean, he put a personal feeling involved in the case. I believe she got killed because she a witness to another murder. I ended up serving 20 years for manslaughter. I am innocent. They took my life away from me. I went, when I went to jail, I didn't care no more, you know. I was 31 when I got sentenced. When I got out of jail, I was 51. Now I'm 53, finna be 54. Like I said, I, I'm just here to prove that I ain't do it. I want to have a peace of mind. I want her family have a peace of mind because they family been knowing my family a long time. All I want to do now is move on with my life, and I want them to do the same. What was it like for you to grow up without a mom? It was hard, man. It was hard, and me and all my brothers and sisters got separated. You know, we didn't find each other till we was like. I was like 25. You, you know, got we all split up with different families. Yeah, we hadn't, seen my, we hadn't seen each other since my mother, my mother friend. I mean, he just grew up my life, man. I mean, he, he took everything from me. You know, who did? I loved your mama. Two more people. It was in bars. Right, man, you ruined my I don't no. man. I used to ruin my life, man. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Man, you, I... you ruined my life, man. Were you with her? The night of the murder? No, I was not. Why did you say you because were? Because I was drunk, full yeah. of dope. Because you at one point told the police that you actually hit her. Yeah, I, was, I, don't, I don't know why I said that, because that was not true. You I can't was. understand that. For you to bring us on a TV show with this, bro, you can't understand it. You know how long ago that was? How long ago I put that behind me? Yeah. OK, Donald, uh, you came here today because you felt important to clear your name and clear your name in front of uh, Catherine's children. And you took a lie detector test. And we asked you, uh, did you place your hands around the neck of Catherine to choke and strangle her? You answered no. Did you strike or hit Catherine with any hard object to the face other than your hand? You answered no. Did you at any time sodomize Catherine in 1999 with any foreign object? You answered no. Did you drag Catherine's body along the ground for any distance in April of 1999? You answered no. Did you at any time leave Catherine in an unconscious state on the trail where her dead body was found? You answered no. We asked you, are you the person who killed Catherine in 1999? You answered no. The results came back all the same to each and every one of these questions. And it came back that Donald did not tell the truth. You did. I mean, that. You did your time. You could go on with your life. You could have just disappeared. But you, you want to stab them in the heart, too, no. again? No. Then why are you doing it? That's why didn't you I just came, tell her the truth? Yeah, I killed your mother. 
I don't want to come on a show. Yes, here's your answer. I killed your mother. Yes. It still amazes me that some human person has the capability to be so vicious, so cruel, not to a stranger, but somebody who proclaimed they love this person. And then you come here and you pretend like you're innocent. With that, you can get the off my stage. When somebody can take somebody's life and then, you know, after a period of time, they get to go on and enjoy their lives. To me, there's, there's something that rubs me the wrong way with that. But at least you don't have to wonder. You don't have to wonder if somebody's out there walking around and never got any kind of punishment for your mother's murder. I hope he never reaches out to you and your family again and that you can go on with your lives. Thanks for coming on the show today. I appreciate it. Samaya says that instead of celebrating with her family this holiday, she had to mourn the death of her 22-year-old brother, DJ. Aww. You see, just three weeks ago, he was shot and killed on her birthday. Aww. She even spoke to him just 30 minutes before he died. Aww. Samaya, her sister Chantal, and her mother Kenosha believe DJ was murdered in cold blood by his fiance, Alexis. Aww. And now Alexis admits that she pulled the trigger but claims it was a terrible accident. Take a look. My brother was found in a motel room on the floor, dead, shot in the heart. I will never forget that phone call. Shot in the heart, and he had the biggest heart. That made me feel heartbroken because that's my only brother and he's my little brother at that. And I love him to death just like he loved his family. Sometimes I still pick up the phone just to call my brother. It slips my mind that he's gone and passed away. We got a call from the police around 1.30, 2 o'clock, stating that my brother had been shot at a motel around 10 a.m. He was laid on the floor and Alexis had the gun. I heard that my brother was laying down and Alexis grabbed the gun from under the pillow, was on top of him, playing with the gun, he he ha ha, pointing to his chest, and all of a sudden, boom. Alexis just kept changing her story. But her explanation was pretty much he used his body as a target on teaching her how to use a gun. Anybody with common sense will know nobody would use their body as a target to teach anyone how to shoot. Only thing I could think of is Alexis killed my brother cold-heartedly. I know Alexis tried to murder my brother because in the past, they had a situation where she tried to slit his throat in his sleep, and he came to me and told me about it and also showed me the marks on his neck. One going straight across right here, and then one down this way. After she killed my brother, she was held in custody for only a few days. She told the police that it was an accident. They believe her, and she went out. She went free. How did the shooting go down? On December 19th, me and him were in the hotel room. DJ wakes up, and he takes the gun from under the pillow, because he sleeps with the gun under his pillow. So this particular day, he takes it from under the pillow. And for some reason, he removes the clip from the gun. And he starts removing the bullets from the clip. Now, he's sitting there talking to me about it, just explaining to me that the, the top bullet was jammed in there funny. So he took all the bullets out and replaced them all back into the clip. But he never put the clip back into the gun. So he's still sitting there talking to me, just having a conversation about it. Next thing I know, he starts telling me like, oh baby, I'ma make you not scared of the gun because I never touched the gun. I never engaged in any activity with him when he had this gun out. I'm always the one telling him that he needs to put it up because I still have a small child that he was around. So there's no need for you to have it out. So that day, He's like, oh, baby, you don't have to be scared of the gun. Like, I'm going to make you not scared of it. Like, when I hear that he used himself as a target practice, like, I have no clue where they got that from. Like, that's just ignorance. No human is going to use themselves as a target practice. So he's trying to hand me the gun, and I'm steady telling him, like, no, nah, baby, go get dressed so I could drop you off. He like, oh, are you scared of it? Like, come on out, babe. Like, you don't have to be scared of it. Like, this is for our protection. 
So after about him doing that maybe two or three other times, I'm like, I'm not scared of it, baby. And I just snatched it from him. And when I snatched the gun from DJ, he was literally standing right in front of me and he got shot. You murdered my brother. Ain't nobody murdered your brother. You did murder my brother. Girl, ain't nobody murdered him on purpose. It was an accident. That's what good it was. You grab a gun, bitch. Girl, I'm right down, down, bro. No, I believe you did that on purpose. I don't believe what you want to believe. I'm not worried about you. I ain't worried about nobody you. Else, but we gonna get our rounds, though. If if what she's saying is true, um, that your brother had been seeing her for quite a long time, that just in a short time before he was killed, um, he had proposed to her and they planned on getting married. Um, why do you think... Everybody know DJ. My Luke brother Luke told me why he wanted to think... marry somebody else. He told my mom and my sister. I'm not gonna say the name, but he told us who he wanted to marry. He gonna tell y'all no, whatever he, he wants he to got tell y'all. To my keep y'all out of our business. Everybody Bitch, y'all went with... in a... Ain't nobody talking to you, to be huh? honest with you. Ain't nobody ain't talking to you, Y'all not nobody to be honest with you. you. Why, I'm talking to why? you, though. What mean? Pull up! But what would be her cause to murder your brother? What, what, why would she want him dead? My brother been telling me that he wanted to leave her because she kept dealing with her baby father. Your mother's here today, but she made a tape, and we're gonna watch that now. I miss him. I'm gonna miss his hugs. I'm gonna miss everything about my son. I want him back. I think Alexis murdered my son because she wanted money from him, and he didn't have it. He was ready to leave, and she did what she, she did. When Alexis says she killed him by accident, I believe she's really lying, Cause, because of all the stuff that she put my son through. I don't okay. care about right. no, you right. talking about right. Beyonce. Right, 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 right. My right. son bought me a ring. What, what am I going to kill him for? What am I going to kill him for? So Absolutely what, what, no that reason. That ring don't mean no nothing, reason. baby. It don't mean nothing. But still, what's the point, though? You know what? What's the point? I'm going to let God what's handle you, baby. I'm going to let God handle all of y'all. I'm going to let God handle all of y'all. When y'all get the resource, even when y'all get the resource, y'all still not going to feel some type of way. Y'all still, still gonna feel some Girl, type of way. You know what? Y'all still gonna feel some type of way. When these resources read that it was nothing more than accident, y'all you know still gonna feel like I killed him in cold blood. Yep, so yep, yeah, okay, yep, I'll I sure am. You're a mother, right? Yeah, I'm a mother. Okay. You have to take in consideration this woman here. And lost I understand her son. that. That's exactly why I've been that trying to reach out to her. Be brutal. To talk to her and just to let her know. Because even her family members came and told me all the different stories that's going around. And my thing is, I'm trying to talk to this woman personally so I can let her know about what happened. How are you going to say at the end of your story, DJ didn't know that it was a, a, a gun, a bullet stuck up in the chamber? In the beginning, you just said, Oh, uh, DJ told me that it's a gun stuck in the chamber while he over there. But uh, yeah, bought a bullet stuck in the chamber while he over here taking all the rest of the bullets out. Nobody Which one is knew it? That it did was he, a bullet did he know or did he didn't know? Nobody knew that did it was a bullet stuck in the chamber. Did he know or did he didn't know? Which one is it? He didn't know. Nobody in the knew. Because because that he didn't know why he no, was he cleaning know, the gun. And I said he took the clip out of the gun. If the clip is out the gun, nobody is thinking and that there's a bullet in the chamber. And up in there and it was jammed. Did you ever try to slash or cut DJ's throat with any weapon? She answered no. Did you plan to shoot DJ? She answered no. On December 19th of 2019, did you intentionally shoot DJ? She answered no. The results came back the same to each and every question, and it came back that Alexis told the truth. <laughs> Nothing's gonna make you feel better. I understand that, especially since the fact that you just buried your son, your brother, just a few days ago. Uh, will anybody ever know exactly what happened in that hotel room? Probably not. Um, 
Do I believe that she intentionally tried to kill your brother? No, I don't believe that. Um, was there total irresponsibility, you know, in that room? Yeah, something happened that somebody wasn't acting very responsible and a gun went off and a young man lost his life. And I hope that somehow you get past this and go on being a family. I, I, I hope this helps you a little bit, ma'am. I really do. And again, my condolences to you and I hope that you can move forward. Granifa's mother, Lisa, was only 57 years old when she suddenly passed away in her sleep. The family all believed that she died from a heart attack, but were taken by surprise when the autopsy report said that she had illegal drugs in her system. And that's when the suspicion turned to Quanifa. Her entire family believes that she killed her mother because she was with her the night she died. Take a look. I miss my grandma. I miss her spirit. My grandma was close to everyone because she used to always, if there was any problems in the family, she would bring everybody to over to her house and cook. So we just will forget about all the issues that we had going on and she would just cook and it would be over, all the issues would be over. My grandma, she died in her sleep. She had like a heart attack. So when the autopsy came up and it said that she had alcohol poisoning and cocaine residue in her system, it was a shocking to everybody. The family believed that my Aunt Kwanifa had something to do with my grandma's death. My Aunt Alisa said, my aunt Kwanifa called her and confessed that she gave my grandma cocaine. I'm not sure why she confessed. Maybe Alisa said that she was drunk, but it was two o'clock in the morning on Mother's Day. My family is saying that my aunt Kwanifa had something to do with my grandma rent money because they said that my grandma had money put up for rent and there was no money to be found. And if she did it, I would be upset. I would be hurt, I would be mad, I would be angry. If my aunt Kwanifa fails, I'm gonna move out her house and I'm never gonna talk to her again. Were you shocked that, I mean, I looked at the autopsy. Yeah. It says chronic use. Yeah. That this is, that this is, wasn't a one-time thing. Yeah. That this is, was ongoing. Yes, it's just. Did oh. it surprise any of your other sisters that? Yes, because my mother never did drugs, so I'm not understanding where it came from. I know it didn't come from me, so I don't know. No. It didn't come from me. Was there any kind of investigation by the police? No. No, so they, they no. feel like this is, she had drugs in her system, but uh, she did this on her own and she passed away. Yes. Are you worried that if you were to take a lie detector test and fail, that the police might open an investigation looking at you? I'm not gonna fail. You're 100% sure yes. that you're gonna pass? Yes. Well, and if you were to fail, not only the police look at an investigation, your relationship with your sisters might be damaged. Right, but I'm not gonna fail. Uh, Cause who lives with you? Um, Essence is my niece. Yeah, and she says, if you fail, she's moving out and then she's yeah. not gonna want anything to do with you ever again. But I didn't do it. Okay, so you're not worried about that. No. Let's bring Essence up. What happened to her? What happened to her? Why is everybody saying this? I don't know, I didn't why do it. Why did Alisa say you called her? Two o'clock in the morning on Mother's Day. I didn't do it. On Mother's Day, saying that you confessed, you crying. She's lying, I did not do it. I would never hurt my mother, I didn't do it. So why is everybody believing that, she, that you did I don't this? know, it's a lie, I did not do it. I love my mother, why would so, I kill her? So Essence, uh, were, you, <laughs> were you living in the house at the time of your no, grandmother's son? No. Uh, so you moved in afterwards? Yes. Um, when, you, when you heard that the cause of death from the autopsy report was cocaine and alcohol, what did you think? It was shocking because I never seen my grandma do any type of drugs. It was shocking. I didn't know what right. to think. And when's the first time you heard that uh, Kwanifa might be involved with your grandmother's It was dog? the day after Mother's Day. I went to another family member's house, and I was told that she confessed on the phone. She was crying. She was saying, oh, I did it. I didn't mean to hurt her. Not now, sorry. this family member that tells you this story, any reason why they would be lying? I'm not sure. I want to know. Right. All right, Elisa, um, thanks for joining us today. What do you want to add? I'm under, uh, what I understand is you were saying that Quinifa called you on Mother's Day and basically confessed that she had something to do with your mother's death. Yes. 
What exactly did Quinifa say to you? She said her and her friends was giving my mother codeine. That's what she said. Codeine for what? They were drinking. She was giving them. She was giving. Are they you were serious? All drinking. Yes, Are I'm you serious. serious. I'm so I said serious. that to you. Yes, she I did. Said, okay. You called me crying. You kept saying you okay. were sorry. Yes, she did. Okay, we're gonna see. Now, Lisa, you have a sister, Miracle. Yes. Is she there also? Yes. Would she like to join the conversation? Yes. Hello? Hi, Miracle. Hi. Now, I understand you were the last person to see your mother alive, right? Yes. And when being the last person uh, seeing your mother alive, tell me about that. Okay, so it was um, a Thursday night, I think, and um, I, I came from work. That was like at 6.30 in the morning, and like she was sitting up, she was fine or whatever. And then I went to sleep and I woke up and I tried to wake up, but she wasn't waking up. And the last person to be with my mom was her. Quinifa did come. She took a lie detector test. And we asked her, before her death, did you witness your mother using cocaine? She answered no. Did you give your mother cocaine before she died? She answered no. The results to those two questions came back inconclusive, which means we couldn't get a result either positive or negative. So we can't give you a, a definite answer on those two questions because those results came back inconclusive. Then we went on to ask you, did you make that call to your sister admitting you did something to your mother? Did you make that call to your sister admitting you did something to your mother. You answered no. You did not tell the truth. You're a liar! I did not, I did You're not a liar! Why I would did you call her? Me? I did not call her! Why did you lie and say I didn't did call her? her? Did you have any involvement in your mother's death? I didn't hurt my mom. You answered no. I didn't hurt my mom. In the year before your mother's death, this is crazy. did you steal any money from her? You answered no. Oh, my God. Were you drugging your mother in drug order my... to steal money oh from God, her? Going on? I didn't drug my mom. You answered no. The results came back the same to each one of those three questions, and it came back that Quinifa did not tell the truth. I didn't. What? You need to go to jail. I did not do nothing to my mother. You need to go to jail. Alisa, what, what is your reaction to the results? I didn't do this. I didn't do it. I mean, I've, I'm speechless, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's making me angry, so I, I'm just keeping quiet. I didn't do it. This is good. I didn't do it. I didn't uh, hurt my mom. Miracle, what's your reaction <laughs> to her failing the test? Like, it's a shame. It's a shame that you have to do that to your own mom. <laughs> like, it's like, it's a shame. She knows she, she's lying. I this is so mom. embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. I didn't do it. Well, I, I think it's I wanna go home. not so embarrassing I because I a mother <laughs> lost her life because I don't know your mother, but I got to imagine that if Quinifa said, Mom, I need a few bucks, I can't imagine I your mother would it. deny her. Like, this is and your mother lost, lost her life over, over money? I mean, oh. that's Money me. hungry. It's, 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 this it's, it's a real tragedy. It. Uh, this has to be hard for everybody in your family to hear that Quinifa basically ended your mother's life over money. Um, you know, this evidence, like I said, it points to she, she confessed to you. She has motive if she's stealing money from your mom. And the fact that, you know, we normally don't give somebody six lie detector tests. I mean, I think the most is we normally give people three and that we give her six and she failed so miserably for this. Hopefully the police open up an investigation, put some heat on maybe somebody that was there and they get the truth and maybe somebody will speak out against your sister. If you're, you know, I believe that your sister did this. And by ending your mother's life, she should be, you know, convicted. <laughs> 
she should go to prison for what she did. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to get your answers for this type of story. Uh, I hope this helps you moving forward with uh, hope maybe getting an investigation into your sister. And I hope that you'll keep us updated with what's going on if there is an investigation. Okay. Uh, again, you. my condolences to you, and I hope that you get justice for your family. Thank you. A seven-week-old infant boy was found dead in his car seat. His parents say he died of natural causes, but the coroner's report stated the infant's official cause of death was strangulation sustained unattended in a car seat for hours. He also had suffered from a broken arm, a broken collarbone, bruises to the face, neck, arms, and brain. Reports stated that this infant endured a tremendous amount of brutal, inhumane, and fatal injuries. Four people were charged in his murder, his mother, his father, and his grandparents. I have all four of them here today, and I want to find out what really happened to this baby. Michelle, you were that young man's mother? Yes, I was. Why did you call the show? Nobody killed the baby. The baby died natural causes in his crib. And I just want to clear my name. The baby died. I remember when I found him in his crib. He was blue, looking like this in his crib. And I ran him into my dad. I said, Dad, 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 the baby is dead. He calls 911, and a few minutes later, I ran back to my husband. I said, the baby is dead. Larry is my husband. And your son was found with broken bones, bruises, and cuts, right? Yes. How old was your son when he passed away? Seven weeks. Seven weeks. How does a seven-week-old baby suffer broken bones, bruises, and cuts? I know nobody's going to believe it, but we sat and watch the cops take this bundle, go like this to him over his shoulder, a bundle of my baby over the shoulder, throwing him like a damn football into the ambulance. That's where I believe he got the broken bones and the bruises. So you're saying the police came, responded to a, a baby that uh, wasn't breathing, that because was Because he wasn't, he didn't have the, no marks the police, when they first came. The police picked up the baby, was swinging around and causing injuries to yeah, this baby. We three of us seen it. Coroner's report read, Marks and wounds consisting of contusions of the head, neck, and lower extremity. Abrasions of the head, neck, and trunk. Lacerations of the head and other new injuries and fractures in various stages of healing. So that means a lot of these injuries already happened before the police got there. Why did they cover up a broken bone that was three weeks old from the hospital? I don't know. You tell me. Well, how did, why did they do that? When we mentioned to how them that... How did your child suffer a broken bone when it's seven weeks old? Because he was in the hospital for three weeks, and they said that... So who did that? The doctors? The yeah. So the police they found were the doctors. Out by the so the police were the doctors are just going around in your town beating up babies. Yes, they did. We even asked for lie detector tests, and they wouldn't even give us one. I'm going to ask you to leave the stage and I'm going to talk to your ex-husband. I'll admit I, I drank and stuff like that. but got angry about stuff, but I never hit her. I never hit my children. What were you charged with? The same as Michelle, murder, felonious assault, child endangering. And how long did you serve? Five years. Five years. And again, why did you plead guilty? Because our attorneys have pushed us to the fact, well, if you don't accept the plea, which it was offered as a four-way, all four of us took it or none of us took it. Michelle and I were both looking at life, if not life, death. They must have had some evidence against you if they were going to pursue life in prison against you, the death go, penalty. Go figure. The prosecutors can lie, cheat, steal, and do whatever the hell they want to get a conviction. Now, what, I've seen it well, happen. What would be the point of convicting you and your wife? You, you, lost, you lost your son. They don't care. It's all about money to them. What money did it, they get? Oh, 48000 a year per inmate to, for them to sit in prison? That's what they give a damn about. It's all state. We never touched our kids, Steve. You're, never. You're, you saw the, the photos of your son, right? Yeah. Well, how do you explain those bruises They're and marks? Probably all doctored photos, too, which is something else he's the corrupt corner bastards. Doc, the corner know. doctored those photos. Well, go figure, Steve. Get off my stage.
bring out the grandmother, Mary. You weren't even there the day of the crime. They charged you because they felt you were protecting somebody, right? I really didn't know. So you don't believe anybody abused this child? No, there was no marks on him when I saw him. Okay. You, we'll bring you back out to get to the results of your lie detector test, okay? You're excused. Let's bring out Richard, the grandfather. What were you charged with? I was charged with child endangering and uh, I believe obstruction of justice. And did you, were, did you plead also? Yes, I did. And what did you receive? I, I received three years. I actually did 14 months. In jail? Yes. And before the show, you took a lie detector test? Yes, I did. Why don't we bring everybody out and get to the results of these lie detector tests? <laughs> Mary, you were given a lie detector test before the show? Yes. You were asked, did you ever physically abuse your grandson? Yes. You answered no. Did you cause the death of your grandson? You answered no. The results of those questions on your lie detector test is that you told the truth. <laughs> you were also asked, did you ever see anyone else physically harm your grandson? You answered no. You were asked, did you intentionally lie to the police during an investigation of the child's death? You answered no. And the results of those two questions you were asked is that you did not tell the truth. I'm sorry. Chris. Michelle, you served six years in prison? Yes, I did. Anything you want to say before we read your results? No, let's get it on. Get I it on, huh? It. I want to hear the, the lie detector test. OK. Results for Michelle. Did you ever see anyone else physically harm your son? You answered no. Did you ever physically abuse your son? You answered no. Did you cause the death of your son? You answered no. And the results for your lie detector test is that you have told the truth. I told you guys I didn't kill my baby. I told you. <laughs> Richard, Dad, you were asked, did you ever see anyone else physically harm your grandson? You answered no. Did you cause the death of your grandson? You answered no. And regarding those two questions, you told the truth. Sorry, Daddy, because you spent a year. He was asked a third question. Did you ever physically abuse your grandson? You answered no. And the results for that question is that you did not tell the truth. I don't believe it. But didn't do nothing to my kid. Somebody did. Uh, I don't know who it was. I don't believe this man did anything. He was given a lie detector test and he was asked, did you ever see anyone else physically harm your son? He answered no. He was asked, did you ever physically abuse your son? He answered no. He was asked, did you cause the death of your son? And he answered no. And the results of his lie detector test is that he did not tell the truth. I did tell the truth. I don't believe that he did it. He I failed the test do it, honey. three times. That was my baby. I didn't. You didn't do it, but you could have passed the damn test three times. <laughs> and you spent five years in jail. At least there was some measure of justice for your son. <laughs> The show is over. You wanted to come, and you wanted answers. You got your answers. <laughs> I, again, I am sorry for your loss of your son. I truly am. Thank you. But I hope you make the right decisions moving forward, that you don't go back with this guy, because he's a liar. Thank you, Steve. And moving forward, you hold people accountable. You protect your children. You do whatever it takes. No matter what anybody says to you, what anybody tells you to do, 
you protect your children. <laughs> <laughs>